This video is going over the Building Java Programs book, uh, chapter 8, which is about classes. And we've got self-check 4 called Reference Mystery. And we're doing this in the Practice It website, which is a free uh, website that accompanies the book. So um, the point of this problem is, as the name implies, reference, uh, passing by reference. So we covered a little bit of this in chapter 7 with arrays that where, whereas um, passing an integer, for example, here, passing this integer int a, when you pass an integer, anything you do inside the method is local to this method. There, this is exactly identical, identical to as if I had declared int a as a local down here and then copied in the value from outside. And anything you do to the, the value, is because it's local, it will not have any effect on any variable that's passed in up here. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you do to a down here, this a up here is going to be unchanged. However, when you pass in an object here, uh, just like we learned in chapter 7 with arrays, when you pass in an object that we're learning about in, in chapter 8, that object is a reference. So rather than being a full point, it's a reference. And so when you modify point 1.x, that actually affects this point 1 or point 2 that's being passed in from this stack frame. So let's take a, take a look at this in detail. Let me bring up a notepad window so we can take notes as we go through. So um, I'm going to use the, this window in, in um, kind of visually illustrate what's going on. So first we're going to have an, uh, an integer a equals 7 and a b equals 9. Okay, Those are locals to this stack frame. And, uh, and when I say stack frame, uh, that's just the technical term for a method. Okay, Every method has its own stack frame. When you call another method, that creates another stack frame. All right, but now let's get into p1 equals a new point, and it's going to have 2, 2, and p2 is a new point, and that's going to have 2, 2. Okay, so now we're going to call add to twice. So let's go down here. So in this add to twice method, we're being passed in what's equivalent of, uh, it's really a, a local variable, really. It says a is equal to, what is the value up here at that time? Well, it came from value 7, okay? So a is 7, and um, p1 is also passed in, but p1 is a pointer. It's a reference. I'll call it a reference. In C, we call them pointers, but let's let's just say that we're passing it by reference, okay? So um, to above. All right. So now, when a equals a plus a, that means a equals seven plus seven, and that's going to be fourteen. Okay. So when it prints out here, um, a that's going to be fourteen, and then then p one x equals a, well that's actually going to affect that, this up here, okay? So the x is the first point uh, part of this uh, this point. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the first, it's, there's an x and a y, so it's going to be assigned 7, okay? And then it's going to print out this, uh, oh sorry, uh, a, sorry, it's, it's not going to be 7, it's actually going to be 14, right? Because a is now equal to 14. So it's Grabbing the four, the A from this stack frame here, which is now 14, and actually, let me, to be clear, uh, let me put this up here because it's it's really referring to that value here, and not this value here. This A and is in a different different stack frame, so it's using the P1, the A here, and st storing that into P1x. Okay, so that's going to be another 14. And let's go back. So it, it, after recalling that there, then it's going to print out A, B, P1X, and P2X. So that's going to print out A is still 7 here. It's still still 7. B is still 9. P1X, however, is 14. And then P2X is still 2. Got an extra space in there. Okay, let's go back to looking at our variables. All right, so then uh, it's going to call add x twice, b 
B and P2. So now we've got another call, and so now we've got A equals B, which was 9, and P1 equals, now we're passing in P2. So it's reference to P2 above. Yeah, I should really say reference to P1. Okay. So now what happens when we call this? So A, so A equals A plus A. So now A equals 19, equals 18. Okay. And then P1X, that P1 is not going to look at the um, caller's P1, but rather it's going to look at the reference to P2. So it's actually going to affect this P1X, which is now P2.X, equals 18. So now when it prints this out, it's going to be A, which is 18, and P1X, which is 18. Let's go back. So now we have we've executed here, and now we've executed here, and finally we're going to print out the values of A, B, P1X, and P2X. Okay, so now a is still 7, B is still 9, but now P1X and P2X are 14 and 18. And let's just double check. Yep, that works. So what was this problem about? This problem is about reference passing. And where, whereas we learned about reference passing in Chapter 7 for arrays, the same thing applies to classes in Chapter 8. When you pass in a class, it allows the call the called function to modify that uh, that member from the the caller okay and I don't like these mystery problems because they're specifically calling this point p1 and trying to confuse you is it this p1 and really they shouldn't do that okay <laughs> um, I don't it, it's I've I've seen it in professional programming but basically that's the sign of poor programmer okay you want to have different names that don't conflict with each other. Um, but anyways, aside from that point of confusion here, whatever point you're passing in here, that's what's going to be affected back here in the caller, uh, in the, the, the calling function. So um, that's how you uh, deal with reference passing of objects in Chapter 8. So if you've liked this video and found it helpful, please like and subscribe. I have a lot of videos. For, it's a complete curriculum for building Java programs, and I have a lot of these practice it problems on there as well.